Section One of the Aesop for Children. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Bob Neufeld. The Aesop for Children by Aesop. The Wolf and the Kid. There was once a little kid whose growing horns made him think he was a grown-up billy goat and able to take care of himself so one evening when the flock started home from the pasture and his mother called the kid paid no heed and kept right on nibbling the tender grass a little later when he lifted his head the flock was gone he was all alone the sun was sinking long shadows came creeping over the ground a chilly little wind came creeping with them, making scary noises in the grass. The kid shivered as he thought of the terrible wolf. Then he started wildly over the field, bleating for his mother. But not halfway, near a clump of trees, there was the wolf. The kid knew there was little hope for him. "'Please, Mr. Wolf,' he said, trembling, I know you are going to eat me, but first please pipe me a tune, for I want to dance and be merry as long as I can. The wolf liked the idea of a little music before eating, so he struck up a merry tune, and the kid leaped and frisked gaily. Meanwhile the flock was moving slowly homeward. In the still evening air the wolf's piping carried far. The shepherd dogs pricked up their ears. They recognized the song the wolf sings before a feast, and in a moment they were racing back to the pasture. The wolf's song ended suddenly, and as he ran with the dogs at his heels, he called himself a fool for turning piper to please a kid, when he should have stuck to his butcher's trade. Do not let anything turn you from your purpose. THE TORTOISE AND THE DUCKS The tortoise, you know, carries his house on his back. No matter how hard he tries, he cannot leave home. They say that Jupiter punished him so, because he was such a lazy stay-at-home that he would not go to Jupiter's wedding, even when especially invited. After many years, Tortoise began to wish he had gone to that wedding. When he saw how gaily the birds flew about, and how the hare and the chipmunk and all the other animals ran nimbly by, always eager to see everything there was to be seen, the tortoise felt very sad and discontented. He wanted to see the world, too, and there he was with a house on his back, and little short legs that would hardly drag him along. One day he met a pair of ducks and told them all his trouble. "'We can help you see the world,' said the ducks. "'Take hold of this stick with your teeth, and we will carry you far up in the air where you can see the whole countryside. But keep quiet, or you will be sorry.' The tortoise was very glad indeed. He seized the stick firmly with his teeth. The two ducks took hold of it, one at each end and away they sailed up toward the clouds. Just then a crow flew by. He was very much astonished at the strange sight, and cried, This must be surely the king of tortoises. Why, certainly, began the tortoise. But as he opened his mouth to say these foolish words, he lost his hold on the stick, and down he fell to the ground, where he was dashed to pieces on a rock. Foolish curiosity and vanity often lead to misfortune. The young crab and his mother. Why in the world do you walk sideways like that? said a mother crab to her son. You should always walk straight forward with your toes turned out. Show me how to walk, mother dear, answered the little crab obediently. I want to learn. So the old crab tried and tried to walk straight forward, but she could walk sideways only, like her son, and when she wanted to turn her toes out, she tripped and fell on her nose. 
do not tell others how to act unless you can set a good example the frogs and the ox an ox came down to a reedy pool to drink as he splashed heavily into the water he crushed a young frog into the mud the old frog soon missed the little one and asked his brothers and sisters what had become of him a great big monster said one of them stepped on little brother with one of his huge feet big was he said the old frog puffing herself up was he as big as this oh much bigger they cried the frog puffed up still more oh, he could not have been bigger than this she said but the little frogs all declared that the monster was much much bigger and the old frog kept puffing herself out more and more until all at once she burst do not attempt the impossible end of section one section two of the aesop for children this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Hallie Kill. The Aesop for Children by Aesop. The Dog, the Cock, and the Fox. A dog and a cock, who were the best of friends, wished very much to see something of the world. So they decided to leave the farmyard and to set out into the world along the road that led to the woods. The two comrades traveled along in the very best of spirits and without meeting any adventure to speak of. At nightfall, the cock, looking for a place to roost, as was his custom, spied nearby a hollow tree that he thought would do very nicely for a night's lodging. The dog could creep inside, and the cock would fly up on one of the branches. So said, so done, and both slept very comfortably. With the first glimmer of dawn, the cock awoke. For the moment, he forgot just where he was. He thought he was still in the farmyard, where it had been his duty to arouse the household at daybreak. So standing on his tiptoes, he flapped his wings and crowed lustily. But instead of awakening the farmer, he awakened a fox, not far off in the wood. The fox immediately had rosy visions of a delicious breakfast. Hurrying to the tree where the cock was roosting, he said very politely, "'A hearty welcome to our woods, honored sir. I cannot tell you how glad I am to see you here.' I am quite sure we shall become the closest of friends. I feel highly flattered, kind sir, replied the cock slyly. If you will please go round the corner to the door of my house, and at the foot of the tree my porter will let you in. The hungry but unsuspecting fox went around the tree as he was told, and in a twinkling the dog had seized him. Those who try to deceive may expect to be paid in their own coin. Belling the Cat the mice once called a meeting to decide on a plan to free themselves of their enemy, the cat. At least they wished to find some way of knowing when she was coming, so they might have time to run away. Indeed, something had to be done, for they lived in such constant fear of her claws that they had hardly dared stir from their dens by night or day. Many plans were discussed, but none of them was thought good enough. At last a very young mouse got up and said, I have a plan that seems very simple, but I know it will be successful. All we have to do is hang a bell around the cat's neck. When we hear the bell ringing, we will know immediately that our enemy is coming. All the mice were much surprised that they had not thought of such a plan before. But in the midst of rejoicing over their good fortune, an old mouse arose and said, I will say that the plan of the young mouse is very good, but let me ask one question. Who will bell the cat? It is one thing to say that something should be done, but quite different to do it. The Eagle and the Jackdaw An eagle swooping down on powerful wings seized a lamb in her talons and made off with it to her nest. A jackdaw saw the deed, and his silly head was filled with the idea that he was big and strong enough to do it as the eagle had done. So with much rustling of feathers and a fierce air he came down swiftly on the back of a large ram but when he tried to rise again he found that he could not get away for his claws were tangled in the wool and so far was he from carrying away the ram that the ram hardly noticed he was there the shepherd saw the fluttering jackdaw and at 
once guessed what had happened. Running up, he caught the bird and clipped its wings. That evening, he gave the jackdaw to his children. What a funny bird this is, they laughed. What do you call it, father? This is a jackdaw, my children. But if you should ask him, he would say he is an eagle. Do not let your vanity make you overestimate your powers. The Boy and the Filberts A boy was given permission to put his hand into a pitcher to get some filberts. But he took such a great fistful that he could not draw his hand out again. There he stood, unwilling to give up a single filbert, and yet unable to get them all out at once. Vexed and disappointed, he began to cry. "'My boy,' said his mother, "'be satisfied with half the nuts you have taken, and you will easily get your hand out. Then perhaps you may have some more filbert some other time. Do not attempt too much at once.'" End of section two. Recording by Hallie Kill. Section 3 of The Aesop for Children. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Francis Brown. The Aesop for Children by Aesop. Hercules and the Wagoner. A farmer was driving his wagon along a miry country road after a heavy rain. The horses could hardly drag the load through the deep mud, and at last came to a standstill when one of the wheels sank hub-deep in a rut. The farmer climbed down from his seat and stood beside the wagon, looking at it, but without making the least effort to get it out of the rut. All he did was to curse his bad luck and call loudly on Hercules to come to his aid. Then, it is said, Hercules really did appear, saying, Put your shoulder to the wheel, man, and urge on your horses. Do you think you can move the wagon by simply looking at it and whining about it? Ha! Huh. Hercules will not help unless you make some effort yourself. And when the farmer put his shoulder to the wheel and urged his horses, the wagon moved very readily. Soon the farmer was riding along in great content and with a good lesson learned. Self-help is the best help. Heaven helps those who help themselves. The Kid and the Wolf A frisky young kid had been left by the herdsman on the thatched roof of a sheep shelter to keep him out of harm's way. The kid was browsing near the edge of the roof when he spied a wolf and began to jeer at him, making faces and abusing him to his heart's content. I hear you, said the wolf, and I haven't the least grudge against you for what you say or do. When you are up there, it is the roof that's talking, not you. Do not say anything at any time that you would not say at all times. The Town Mouse and the Country Mouse A town mouse visited a relative who lived in the country. For lunch, the Country Mouse served wheat stalks, roots, and acorns with a dash of cold water to drink. For drink. The town mouse ate very sparingly, nibbling a little of this and a little of that, and by her manner making it very plain that she ate the simple food only to be polite. After the meal, the friends had a long talk, or rather the town mouse talked about her life in the city, while the country mouse listened. 
then they went to bed in a cozy nest hedgerow and slept in quiet comfort until morning in her sleep the country mouse dreamed she was a town mouse with all the luxuries and delights of city life that her friend had described for her so the next day when the town mouse asked the country mouse to go home with her she gladly said yes when they reached the mansion in which the town mouse lived they found on the tables in the dining rooms the leavings of a very fine banquet there were sweetmeats and jellies pastries delicious cheeses indeed the most tempting foods that a mouse can imagine but just as the country mouse was about to nibble a dainty bit of pastry she heard a cat mew loudly and scratch at the door in great fear the mice scurried to a hiding place where they lay quite still for a long time hardly daring to breathe when at last they ventured back to the feast the door opened suddenly and in came the servants to clear the table followed by the house dog the country mouse stopped in the town mouse's den only long enough to pick up her carpet bag and umbrella you may have the luxuries and dainties that i have not she said as she hurried away but i prefer my plain food and simple life in the country with the peace and security that go with it poverty with security is better than plenty in the midst of fear and uncertainty the fox and the grapes a fox one day spied a beautiful bunch of ripe grapes hanging from a vine trained along the branches of a tree the grapes seemed ready to burst with juice and the fox's mouth watered as he gazed longingly at them the bunch hung from a high branch and the fox had to jump for it the first time he jumped he missed it by a long way so he walked off a short distance and took a running leap at it only to fall short once more again and again he tried but in vain now he sat down and looked at the grapes in disgust oh, what a fool i am he said here i am wearying myself out to get a bunch of sour grapes that are not worth gaping for and off he walked very very scornfully there are many who pretend to despise and belittle that which is beyond their reach end of section three recording by francis brown